Hi, I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and this is Finding Respect in the Chaos, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today because I have a very special show. I have brought on one of the girls that I went to high school with. I want to welcome you, Heidi, to my show. Thank you for coming. Thank you. you have I'm honored. Amazing story. I know that Walt Disney's daughter said about you that you reminded her of her dad. That's a pretty cool thing to have, be told, I would think, right? So you have written an amazing book about what you do, and I think the whole world needs to hear it. And most of my viewers, they, um, they come on to see the show has been really sort of focused on bringing survivor stories and advocate stories to the airwaves so people can get them. Since I've come back on camera now, I'm trying to really just look for inspiring stories and positive things that people can hold on to in these days of confusion and unrest and, and worry. And boy, do I have one for everybody today because this story, everybody has got to get breaking ground and read it. It is a story of mines to vines. Heidi has been taking landmines out of the ground and replacing it with agribusiness that is absolutely serving so many people. Countless, countless numbers of farmers are back with a, an ability to use their lands. Their kids are able to go out and play because of Heidi Kuhn and the work that she has done. And so go out and get this book for sure. I know that Cheryl Jennings had a big part in working with you to get this book together and going for the last 20 years, you guys have been working on it and it is a bestseller already and it just came out, right? I'm so, you must be so proud. And we don't even have any bookstores open and still, it made the bestseller list. That's really saying a lot, I think. So there's so many amazing um, things that are, you know, just letters of praise in the front of this book. There's, uh, there's one from Nancy Pelosi. And from what I understand, she does not ever endorse people's books, but she endorsed this one. And it's important. You're going to hear a little bit more about, about Nancy Pelosi and her involvement in this program in a little while. Jane Goodall, the late Kofi Annan, Judy Collins, Cheryl Jennings. I could go on and on and on at the just countless numbers of people, that big, giant, bipartisan people that have come together to endorse this book and to endorse your program. And I think that it's just so exciting. <laughs> And I'm so grateful that you decided to come on my show to talk about it. So I wanna, I'm gonna start some, some slides that we're gonna go through and I wanna start talking about them. So tell us about, tell us about your, your mission and your vision and how it all started for you. <laughs> well, Cindy, it's, it's such an honor, first of all, to be on your show. You know, we were both teenagers together during the 1970s and that was an era of peace and love. And we were attending San Rafael High School in the heart of Marin County, across from the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and really were witnesses to the peace movement. And um, I, I, when I was an exchange student to Utsunomiya, Japan, and came back through Rotary Hawaii, uh, when I was 17 years old, I saw the fact that, that former enemies could be friends. And, and I came back to my senior year at high school and told my parents, I'm gonna go to Berkeley. I'm, I'm gonna learn about peace. I'm gonna get an education. And, and albeit I graduated from political economics of industrial societies uh, in three years, because I wanted to get out there and get on running. So, um, you know, 1979, um, I graduated and, and we, peace and love cannot be more important now, Cindy, to our generation than it has ever, ever been. And, and to be conscious observers to the fact that in Vietnam today, we're 45 years after the Vietnam War ended on April 30th, 1975. I was a junior, you were a senior at San Rafael High School. San Rafael namesake for the angel of healing. And, and how dare we not think boldly to heal the wounds of war by removing the eradicating 
the, the seeds of hatred and violence caused by landmines and planting the roots of peace. In Vietnam, this month, starting in July, marks the 25th anniversary of the normalization of relations, bilateral relations between the United States and Vietnam. And I cannot think of a more friendly thing to do as called forth by President Bill Clinton in 1995 to be a true friend and to eradicate those landmines. Uh, Cynthia, since uh, the Vietnam War ended in 1975, over 100,000 innocent farmers and families' footsteps have been either maimed or killed by explosive remnants of war left behind. So I cannot thank you enough as, as a, you know, Sanderfell Bulldog, you know, to really take that bulldog spirit, not just blah, blah, rah, 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 but it's time for us in our proud 60s. You know, I was diagnosed with malignant cancer when I was 30, given last rites and, and told I wasn't going to live. And when I, um, you make, you know, you go under anesthesia, you look up with one three and five year old child and my prayer, my deepest prayer, dear God, grant me the gift of life and I will do something special with it. Well, that was manifested following the tragic death of the late Princess Diana, um, you know, on Labor Day weekend. Today is, would have been her actual 59th birthday. She was born on July 1st. Um, and, and this would have been her 59th birthday. So I think she would be very proud that her legacy to eradicate the remnants of war from the face of this earth as a mother, not as a princess, but as a mother, and two mothers from San Rafael High on this date to honor her legacy. You know, when two shall gather in his name, and, and you know, I don't know much more than that, Cindy, but just to say thank you to you. You are a survivor on so many levels. I am a survivor, and let's, let's join forces. You know, Aloha Spirit, Pacifica, from the heart of San Francisco the spirit of St. Francis, the gardener. It's not that hard. Our generation of peace and love has never been more important than it is today, right now. And, and Cynthia, the, um, the I call you Cindy because I knew you that from high school, but uh, endearingly, um, today is July 1st and I began the first steps of, um, of this year on this new decade with Conscious Footsteps to um, to Vietnam and January 1st, 2020, you know, I, I joined with um, Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, the president of the Emeritus of the World Food Prize. And together he fought in Vietnam War in 68. And we put our thumbs and detonated one landmine as, as a conscious symbol of peace. It was my birthday, January 6th. And I cannot think of a better way to spend and honor the years of my life to get just one more landmine out of a world where we live with 60 million landmines, 60 million landmines silently poised in 60 countries. And as we, we go through this um, pandemic now, which I never would have expected in, in January, um, you know, today is halftime. It's halfway through the year. It's halftime. What is the legacy we're going to leave for our children? And to me, it is planting the roots of peace like never before, taking bold footsteps across from San Francisco, San Rafael, in fact, um, to Hawaii, and in that aloha spirit to heal the wounds of war and be true shepherds of peace on the one planet that we share. I think the aloha spirit would be proud of us today, Cindy. What do you think? I think so too, and I'm going to be hard pressed to make it through this show without crying. <laughs> to tears tear. of love, tears of love. <laughs> love, absolutely, tears of love, and and maybe a little bit of just admiration too. I so admire you for for sticking to it and for following through and for working as hard as you do, and for keeping love in the front of everything that you do. And it shows, it shows through your book, it shows through your actions, it, it shows by the way you even, the way you talk to people, the way you talk, the way you speak, you have such a loving voice and such a loving way of being. I'm sort of a bull in the china shop crashing around everywhere. <laughs> so I appreciate that calm. I have to remind myself to be, quiet. <laughs> but 
uh, my enthusiasm kind of gets me through things I don't always wouldn't get through otherwise. So listen, I want to see the launch picture because yeah. there's really important people in that launch picture. Um, Eric, could you show us the launch picture? Should be uh, number three. There yeah. you are. Excellent. Oh my gosh. Tell us about this. Tell us about mm -hmm. this. Well, Cindy, as I say, it was three weeks after the tragic death of the late Princess Diana uh, with Dodi Al Fayed. I must say it wasn't just she who died in that car on that fateful uh, Labor Day weekend. It was also her dear friend Dodi. And, and that is also documented in the book later on in the terms of the full circle, honoring the Princess Diana and having Dodi's sister come to me full circle and give me the dress that was worn, the famous Versace off the shoulder blue dress of Diana to include, uh, to continue her spirit to eradicate landmines. Um, but it, um, you know, it really, um, it was a vision uh, uh, three weeks after Diana. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go but I want to see the picture again, please, Eric, if you would bring up the. the yes, line. yes. Let, let, let me go to that. So, so there was the late. Four. Yes. Yeah, the late, uh, well, um, uh, current uh, uh, Mrs. Kofi Annan and her late husband, uh, Kofi, and and our Congresswoman. When I launched Roots of Peace, I didn't have a penny to my name, um, just a vision. And um, uh, turning minds to vines, blood into wine, killing fields into uh, uh, vineyards and orchards worldwide. And our Congresswoman, a very humble, nobody knew her name, sat next to me to my right as I hosted Mrs. Um, Kofi Annan uh, to the bottom right and, and Bobby Mueller. And um, she whispered in my ear, she said, I will be with you as long as this takes. And unbeknownst to any of us in the room at the World Trade Club in San Francisco on April uh, 20th, 1998, um, six months after, you know, we pulled it together to bring the women of the world. And, and um, uh, dear Nancy Pelosi became, of course, unbeknownst, the, the Speaker of the House. And when she put her gavel down, not once, but twice, I was honored in um, 2006 to be invited to um, to Washington D.C. to witness, you know, her being sworn in as the first uh, a woman speaker of the House. And and I'm very clear, Cindy, as you know, the bipartisan respect that I have as an American mother. And and at the um, uh, back of the book is also a beautiful quote from Cindy McCain, the wife of the late Senator John McCain. And I think on the advent of this 4th of July weekend, um, the honor of having had uh, Speaker, Congresswoman Pelosi support me just as a woman you know, again, with not a penny to my name. In fact, I was in the negative, <laughs> unbeknownst. And I've been very honest in that book, how hard it was to turn a vision into reality because we step on many political landmines, don't we, in life sometimes? Sure. Oh, yes. And, uh, it's how we handle those, those, those landmines in our life and how we overcome them, you know, with faith, leading with faith and not fear. And, um, you know, at just, uh, I am so grateful to speak for Pelosi for her long-term support on the many endeavors that we've had uh, both in Afghanistan and Vietnam and that promise that she made um, just again as our, our respected esteemed congresswoman but who would ever believed on two occasions speaker of the house of the United States of America. Okay now I wish I had a two-hour show but I don't. <laughs> so we got to get moving because I really want to get all of these things in because they're otherwise you're just going to have to come on again in, in a couple of weeks. We'll have to do a two-parter or something. So the next one is with you and Kofi Annan. And he actually, and I'm going to read this, okay, for you, says, you have turned minds into vines by replacing the seeds of destruction with the seeds of life. And you have shown the world that even with modest beginnings, a partnership backed up by persistence can make a real difference. And that's a quote from him that's just incredible. Okay, so the next one, where we're going next, is one of my favorite things, right? Um, and that's the penny campaign that your daughter started. I just, that just touched me so much when I was reading about it. So tell us about that. 
Oh, Cindy, it was, um, I took the uh, first month of the new millennium, January 2000, and I walked a minefield. I think half of my friends wondered what, what in the world happened to me. I was touched. They were going off to Tahiti, Hawaii, and I'm going to the minefields of the Balkans. And with my wonderful husband watching our children, I saw what I could never even imagine on a television seat, seeing um, children who couldn't hike the mountains or walk the beaches without the fear of landmines. A little boy, 10 years old, looked at my hand and said, Mrs. Kuhn, is it true that the children have this type of freedom? And I said, yes. And he looked at me and he said, it must be heaven. And I came back with a sense of deep appreciation for what we are blessed with. And my um, uh, five months later, I decided to go back to Croatia and I took my daughter. It was the um, really uh, an, a rite of passage. It was her 13th birthday. And she too saw children who not only could um, wear, you know, the newest pair of jeans as we had in Marin County, but children who were struggling just to have a pair of jeans and to put their prosthetic leg into that, that article of clothing. And she, it touched her heart deeply. And when she met with um, ABC News anchor, Cheryl Jennings, um, it would be, it would, uh, the three of us realized that we had all three uh, uh, California women walked a minefield. What was our responsibility to future generations? So it came from the hearts of babes. It was my daughter who launched the Penny Campaign, the Roots of Peace, Pennies for Peace campaign, and raised 50 million American pennies to build schools and soccer fields for girls in Afghanistan. And those schools stand strong today in places called Bam Sarai, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mir Bochakot, and, and uh, she built a soccer field on the former minefield in Angola where the late Princess Diana took her final footsteps. So, you know, it, it's what children can do. It's what all of us can do when we pass that torch and inspire people. And with COVID-19 right now, the people who live in minefields, Cindy, have to shelter in place every day because they don't know going out that front door where their, ch their child will kick a soccer ball out of bounds or chase a butterfly across a field and boom, lose a limb to a landmine. Or a life even. A life, a limb, a sight, um, a brother, a sister. You know, it's, um, yeah, they know no flags, they know no color, they know no politics, but we live in a world, Cindy, where 60 million landmines are silently poised in, in 60 countries. Can you imagine in Hawaii, uh, beautiful Hawaii, my mother was six months pregnant with me. I, I think I have that aloha spirit in my heart forever. And I've visited, I've had the honor and privilege of uh, that aloha spirit that has always been with me. And uh, it's one of healing as those waves beautifully come in and come out. It is the flow and the nature of the one earth that we share. And, and when we you know, create landmines as, as stupidly <laughs> as we did in the Civil War, you know, yeah. and leave them behind. It's, it's um, as women, we need to come together and remove the violence that this cause. And I know you're such an advocate of um, removing violence in the home, in the heart, and on the face of the earth. So once again, kudos to you, Cindy. We are united on that front. But now I want to talk about my favorite slide and my favorite story almost, because this, this is nothing sort of miraculous. Um, and so if you would show the next slide, it's the Fields of Bethlehem slide. There you go. Now, I want to explain just exactly who it is that you're walking in. <laughs> well, this was the impossible dream. That That's all I can say, to live the impossible dream. But a little boy, uh, Daniel Yuval, age 10, stepped on a landmine tragically when the snow covered the sign warning of landmines in the Golan Heights of Israel. And when he lost his egg leg at age 10, he called me to his bedside and said, Mrs. Kuhn, will you help me create a mind-free world? And, and what, what would have I said? You know, it's interesting that you say that because um, today is July 1st and, and uh, coincidence is a miracle in which God prefers to remain anonymous. But I spent 4th of July in, in the minefields. I left my family, and that's a pretty big holiday in America, and I left my family to go to the bedside of this little boy. And uh, to answer his call um, was my greatest honor, and it was hard. We lobbied at the Knesset, uh, which is the governing body of, of Israel, and helped bring forth, uh, together with Jerry White, the first ever historical 
unanimous legislation at the Knesset. And uh, through dear friends of ours um, who own Spiritera Winery, uh, Shirley and Paul Dean, we raised um, half a million dollars to demine the fields of Bethlehem. And, and that to me, you know, unites three faiths. It's four miles from where Jesus Christ was born. It was in a Muslim village, Husan, and it was governed by Israel. And at, at the moment, ABC7 News anchor Cheryl Jennings accompanied me uh, just a few weeks prior to that, and her dear husband was by my side. Rick Pettibone, who also went to Santa Rafael High School. Um, uh, it was a frozen moment because I insisted that Palestinians and Israelis demine that land together, or I wasn't gonna have a deal. And they froze. And there was a the Palestinian who, who was the shepherd in that photo, you could see lost his arm to a landmine at age 10 because a, those mines were planted in 1948 uh, during the war. And, and he was a 10 year old child. And when the, the Jordanian soldier stepped on the mine, the little 10 year old went to help him. He lost his right arm. So that photo is so poignant to me because it was the Palestinian shepherd. You think of a little town of Bethlehem, how dare we not demine? You think of the shepherd, but think of today, the reality of the shepherd without the arm due to the landmines we'd left behind. And the Israeli soldier wasn't gonna walk. So I got in between them in that photo and said, we're gonna walk together. And, and they said, they're gonna shoot you. And I said, well, then let them shoot a mother. And, and I don't know, those words just came from me. I'm not, you know, I'm not rambunctious. I'm not one to put my life at risk as a mother of four and a grandmother of three. But it just, that picture was so powerful because I said, okay, let's join arms, Palestinian Israelis, and let's march up that hill and demine the fields of Bethlehem. And, and those, yeah. I still can't believe it's run out. Okay, so I'm crying. I knew I wouldn't make it to the show without crying. <laughs> <laughs> we have an interfaith picture, a slide too. And I know we're going to be starting to run short of time here pretty soon. So I don't, and I want to, I definitely want to get through some more, I mean, get at least a little bit further. I want to get to sure. the, the guns and grapes picture because I yep. love that. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, go Bulldogs. <laughs> so I'll turbo through this one. This is, I've had the honor of, of, of meeting many Faiths, you know, as the foreword to the book is by Her Majesty Queen Noor, and, and poignantly states, Her Majesty states, we are all daughters and sons of Abraham. And I think that's the beginning from where we need to start today. With all the challenges of Black Lives Matter, landmines in our world, the landmines in our hearts, the political landmines surrounding us, we are human beings. And, and hopefully we come out of this COVID-19 with a sense of empathy, and understanding and, and truly the aloha spirit that we are all one. So, so I am very, very grateful to have been blessed by many faiths. Um, you know, I was raised Catholic at St. Raphael's, but um, to have had the, the um, and you see in the photo, not only Pope Francis, but the Grand Mufti of uh, the Golden Dome, which is the most sacred site you can see to the right. He presented me with his holy beads and it was the first time I was told a woman has ever been invited to his office because, you know, and but so those beads as well as rosary beads, holy beads, it's one God in my heart. And, and we are all divine, you know, creatures to respect each other. And we are all on the face of this earth facing the challenge of COVID-19. And, and hopefully we can, you know, come together really as a world right now, get down on our knees, which we are humbled. You know, the, the uh, San Francisco Bay Area is upticking with COVID-19 and we need to lead with faith, not fear. Absolutely, I agree. We are gonna go past the next slide because otherwise we won't have time go, to- Go, show it quickly, we'll turbo through it. <laughs> It's the alternative um, crops one. Yes. And it's families, families. And grapes, right? Yep. But it's pepper too. Didn't you like find it? It, it? it is pepper in Vietnam, but, but you know, the Afghan farmers, the uh, fresh grapes are indigenous. Afghanistan is a country 
80% dependent upon agribusiness. And if we're going to lift Afghanistan up from the rubble and the political landmines, it's through this harvest of hope that we are, you know, so from that little toast of mines to vines today, I'm managing over $100 million under contract in Afghanistan. So, um, you know, this isn't a time in our world to think small. We need to think big, but we need to be humble in our footsteps and, and step by step plant the roots of peace on earth now. I totally agree with you. And so there was um, 5,000 women that have had their lives changed because of what you've done over there. They're yeah. now farmers and they've been empowered. And women, like you said, women don't even get invited to the office. Yeah, I, know. No, I know. I know. A roots of peace, I must stress is humanitarian, it's not political. And that photo with the women uh, in the Somali Plains, you can see with their burqas on, we don't make them take them off. We respect their culture, but we're training them to be proud farmers. And just like microcredit lending, the men see the value of the women working from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. in those fields before their children wake up. And, and it makes their lives easier. And then they go back home and throughout the day they cook the meal and they come home and together as husband and wife, they're able to celebrate the harvest. And the women have something to talk about. They feel part of it, not just home inside cooking, but they're contributing uh, to the fruits of the earth, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. Changing the face of, of the land that they have to farm and the face of their families, their future. Mm -hmm. everything is being changed okay now you have been awarded so many awards we've only got about three more minutes left <laughs> i think there's like eight or nine of them i only wrote down a couple of them because i couldn't write them all down but you've won the jefferson award walk the talk from the un the um jacqueline kennedy award for peace you've won uh the rotary service over self award you've won a uh, nobel um, and you won an award from Mahatma Gandhi. And we have some pictures of the, um, the one with um, the Nobel. And Marcus Nobel, and that's the Gandhi Award. It was on the 150th anniversary of Gandhi. Created a whole new award for you. For <laughs> you got the first one. I was great. It was the Earth Ethics Award, and, and the joyful picture you're seeing is at, at where Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated 150 years ago, October 2nd, and I brought a little um, Afghan girl to accept the award on my behalf, because it's not me doing the work, it's those around me. It's my husband, my children, and, and the farmers in the field. So the awards are wonderful. I, you know, I, I just don't want to put them on a shelf, as we always said in the songs that we sang. It's uh, of the seven. 70s, you know, it's not an award to put on a shelf. It, it's a stepping stone for peace. And, and um, it's the words I always accept on behalf of others. Um, I, I always love the quote by uh, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, if I have seen further than others, it's only because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. And those giants to me are my family, my husband, Gary, Dr. Brooks Kuhn, who's um, on the front line with COVID-19 as a physician. we praying for him because he is a doctor and his wife is a doctor and they are out there on the front lines. Okay, so wrap up up here. What I'm going to do is point out that in the front of each, you start out every single chapter in your book with a, a quote from a different faith. And I love that. I think that is so beautiful. It really drives home that message of we are all in this together. And really, it's all one God. And we really, you know, I'm always saying it takes all kinds of religions to reach all kinds of people. Right? And so that's the, that's the reason God made it that way. <laughs> so I'm going to read the one from chapter nine, because I love this one. And you don't really hear a whole lot of Zoroastrianism going on. <laughs> It's kind of out of date these days, right? <laughs> Many of them left. They kind of. Okay. I want to. I want to read this to sort of close. It says, "He who sows the ground with care and diligence acquires a greater stock of merit than is gained by the repetition of ten thousand prayers." And I just love that, and I just love you, and I'm so 
grateful that you came on. I'm so grateful for what you're doing. I often call you a national treasure because you are. <laughs> and, and so that's why I pray for you every day. I want you to know that because I want you to stay safe because we need all the national treasures we can get right now. <laughs> We need mothers. That's what we need. All I am, I'm, I'm CEO, but my greatest TR is that I'm a mother. And that 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 is my legacy. That's your legacy. And I am so honored to be called your friend, uh, Cynthia. And, um, you know, just, you know, you're, you're ahead of me. And I always looked up to you. And I still do here today. Wow, thank you. But I think you've outpassed me by about 10 million zillion times. But no that's... Way. No, no way, Jay. <laughs> this does is we just work on our corner of it now some people like you like my brother out there saving the world that's great and we need national treasures like you guys and then some of us well we can just kind of work on our corner of the world so that's what i'm doing i'm just working on my little corner of the world You're well you know there. you know cindy I'll, I'll close with this with my words but it was the words of the miwok indians who who you know lived once in Marin County, and and when I was struggling in the beginning, as we all do, I mean this has not been a piece of cake to do Roots of Peace. We've been attacked by the Taliban. There's many many stories in the book Breaking Ground, but they told me the story of the Native Americans. And when they women would make baskets, they would pull, they would tug, they would pull, they would tug, and wonder why it was so hard. And at the end of life, they turned the basket around and they saw the beautiful pattern, and they knew why the tugging and the pulling was necessary. So that, that is my story from the heart of a mother from Marin County, the Miwok legacy and legend. And um, to you, my dear friend, aloha, hands across the ocean, hands aloha. across the sea. Thank you so much for coming on. Every go out and get this book because you will not be able to put it down. It is amazing. Broken Ground by Heidi King. Heidi, thank you so much for coming. I can't believe we got all that into a half an hour. Mahalo. Another to wait. I don't know. <laughs> There's so much more for everyone to hear and to learn about what you've done. And I wish you all the best. Godspeed and blessings, thank my you. Thank you, dear friend. Thank you. From the heart of two teenagers to the world. Thank you, my dear friend. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I will try to find us another inspiring story for the next show, although I don't know if I'm going to be able to top this one. <laughs> but I hope you'll join me uh, every other Wednesday at 2 o'clock for Finding Respect in the Chaos. This is Cynthia Sinclair for, finding, for Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>